Once we sell today, we'll be going down the Yarra River as well as the English Channel and the uh, traffic separation scheme. There won't be any exercises as to, well, regarding the navigation. We will have the complete bridge closed up. Hence, we don't want any disturbing exercises throughout the ship. Right, let's clear up the ship. Let's get ready to go. If you leave the ship, please let your division officer know so that we know where you are at all times. Both watches, 18, shoot. Officers, carry on. We've been in Germany a long time. Germany is a great place, but there's nothing like time. Um, personally, this year I would have been away from home seven, eight months, on and off. Um, and then I think the, the person on the ship who's been away from home the least amount of time, probably in the region of two, maybe three months as well. So they really are looking forward to getting home, especially on on this ship with the excitement and that, that awaits us when they come. sent us to sea for the very first time approximately 12 days ago, 12, maybe 13 days ago now. And in that time, we managed to get the ship down the Elbe River, one of the tri trickiest navigation areas in the world, round the Skagerrak through the Baltic, and past German Navy NATO standard safety inspection in an eight, nine day period. And here we are, 12 days later, sailing through the, the English Channel on our way to France. Um, and it's because of the very special people and the spirit that we have on the ship, not just because of the, the capabilities of the ship itself, but because of the people we have that we achieved that. It's been an awesome two weeks. Uh, we, the guys worked 
very hard, long hours. And the amazing thing of these guys was to me, um, coming out on the fly deck and seeing how tired they are, there are people standing on the seat sleeping. They are so tired. And yet you always hear them make a little joke or have a little giggle. And that to me is just hard. It's great. I think com camaraderie and we are feeling that we're doing something that's important or that makes a difference. I think that's what matters most. Obviously, we were warned way before time, we're going to get there and we're going to work. We're going to have to get this year prepared for you or we cannot leave. So that, that, that was, that was a, the, the border, you know. You get it ready and leave. When you don't get it ready, I'm going to stay along with you. We get it prepared. Everyone pulled out that last, much of that last bit of energy that it gave me all just to try and get the ship to leave them in the open. Fire! 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 Fire the regulating office! Fire alarm! Fire alarm! Section Delta, Foxwood, regulating office. Fire alarm, two decks, Foxwood, regulating office. The port party entering scene of the incident now. The port party entering scene the Next one. 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 Two echoes, one fox. All confirmed. One man on each house. Smoke only. Smoke only. So we're just in the area. Just in the area. Still contained to the relay. Fire in section two, fox has been extinguished. Fire in section two, fox has been extinguished. Fire in section two, fox has been extinguished. Machine fire station, patrol station. Machine fire station, patrol station. Blue watch, fire watch. Blue watch, fire watch. South Africa is essentially sea dependent. We have a large fishing industry. They are exploring for offshore oil and I believe finding oil. They have discovered gas and they're producing gas offshore. Over 90% of our trade moves by sea. We have huge harbors, some of the biggest harbors in the world. We, we are a maritime country. Uh, if you don't, have, you don't uh, protect your resources, if you don't protect your country, uh, how are you going to be able to, to actually progress or feed the people in the country? I mean, how do you do that? You need warships to actually protect your maritime resources, and this is one of them. This vessel will be a key element of South African National Defence Force fleet support operations in the future, I have no doubt. Uh, mostly because we have extremely long range, we can travel very far, we can sustain ourselves, and we have good facilities on board to not only accommodate people, but for command and control, for helicopter operating, for medical. So we will be a key component of, of any fleet support operations in the future. Your contact. Over. Oh, going to be busy. Um, we're going to do a lot of work in Africa. I see the ship traveling a lot. I see the ship sailing a lot. And we will definitely fulfill a diplomatic role in Africa.
We have actually been uh, around prior to taking a watch at sea. And we will do the, that normally during comma stage 3. Uh, so that's what we were doing. We were just taking the, the all the air propulsion systems and auxiliary systems just to make sure that when you go and sit in MCR, at least you, now you have a clue as to what's happening in the engine room. I mean, we do have cameras in the engine room, but you cannot smell oil with the camera. And the camera is only fixed to the LOP if you don't see beyond the LOP. <laughs> On the smallest ships, you they tend to roll a lot of steam, and then um, obviously you have to lash down your pots and pans or whatever you're working with. And if you're a person who gets seasick, you tend to get seasick, so you try and cook, run away, and get sick, and come back, wash up, come back, and try and get your food done at the same time. Where as the ship is so stable, you don't see, you don't even know the ship is moving at the moment. As you can see, we're moving, but we still doesn't feel like there's anything happening. What about chicken? Okay, this badge here is your bridge watch keeping badge. Uh, we do a special exam to get this badge. However, to get the badge, you have to do have serve a certain amount of hours on the bridge, uh, both day and night, uh, supervised as well. And then you do the exam. Once the exam's done, then you you, uh, you you get to wear this badge. So you're a qualified watchkeeper, which means you will stand on the bridge unsupervised, navigating the ship uh, to channels, uh, open seas, and uh, doing collision avoidance, also carrying out safety of the vessel and preventing the ship from going aground and stuff like that. I'm just saying, increase speed to two. I'm taking off the watch. My duties then is to say the four masters are uh, on my watch. I have three four masters. They rotate. One will be steering the ship, and the other two will be look at. One on the port side, and one on the starboard side. Uh, my duty is just to make sure that they carry out these duties to the best of their ability, which I can see they do. And um, then also, I'm under control of an obstacle watch. You give me throttle orders on how fast you want to get and how slow. Well, it's life and death the whole time. You have ships passing in front of you. You have very narrow, narrow channels. Um, the water is shallow. You have shallow patches. It, it's always life and death. Um, and it not to sound dramatic, but you can't afford to make mistakes. Man. The office of the watch has got, is in charge of the safety. That's what it all boils down to. It's the safety of the ship while you're up there. Not just the ship, but also the men on board. Uh, if anything happens while you're on watch, you are responsible of taking the appropriate action, whether it be a fire, a man of a board. So, yeah, while you're there, you, you've got quite a load on you now. people about the context around you, what speed you do, courses, make your shop, keep a touch of I'm, I'm going to just quickly get my mouth in and then you can start taking out. Yeah, it's 10 miles away now. Yeah, 
transferring back to BCC control. Bridge Roger. Okay, they're transferring back to BCC control, gentlemen. BCC control. I'll take it BCC control. Proceeding into the port of Brest. to the machinery room, the rest of us on the flight deck, that includes officers. We get a little work group together, we get this cargo on board. All members getting to Simonstown and requiring accommodation must give your names to the captain today. Okay, because remember when you're going to dry dock, we no longer live in, you've got to get off. If you've got no accommodation, the captain must send a signal, you must prepare today. This ship is able to operate on its own with its helicopter and control a very large sea area. It has long-range weapons, long-range sensors. It has the ability to travel far. It has the ability to stay at sea for a long time. And it can easily be deployed anywhere south of the Sahara in support of any of the government's obligations. And it's not just illegal fishing, it's also narcotics smuggling over the beach, gun running over the beach, smuggling stolen goods out over the beach, high value goods. It is tankers that flush their tanks inside territorial waters and wipe out a, a small fish, a fishing zone or whatever. That sort of thing all needs to be monitored. I think it's clear that the great powers do not want to get more involved in Africa than necessary for them. That means that Africa will have to look after itself. Our neighboring countries, particularly Namibia, Mozambique, Tanzania, for years now have been asked to South Africa to help them to take their fishing ground. And you might say, well, why should we bother? Well, partly because the better their economies do, the better we will, because we can sell them things. And partly because if their fishing grounds get 
fished out of existence, their unemployed fishermen come south and so do the poaching fisher fishing boats. The Navy will have a role in defending Sadiq and or in peacekeeping when things go wrong in coastal states. The point is, if South Africa becomes involved in Liberia, it will probably be an able contingent that will focus on suppressing gun running into Liberia. In time, I think the Navy will also get involved in, will have to get involved in suppressing piracy on both west coast and east coast of Africa, where pirate attacks over the last five years or so have more than doubled. The COVID is more expensive than the strike off. We estimate that the price of running a COVID would be less than running two strike off. <clears throat> and if you take into account that one corvette will control 10 times the sea area controlled by two strike off, it becomes uh, economically very effective. It's a very fast ship. And if you're sticking off the port of Hamburg, and Hamburg handles a very large traffic and therefore has superb radar. And the people in the port offices could visibly see the ship with their eyes because it wasn't on their radar screen because the stealth is so good. But we have to look after them very well. They theoretically have a life of 40 years if they treat it properly. My dream always been to come alongside in harbor with the band playing and you know, it never happened to strike off. Always the big ship get all the glory. Um, so we were we pride of that. And now I'm on a big ship and I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that good. Right.